when you're working with networking media, one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that the copper and the fiber that you are using can only use a certain length depending on the speeds and the frequencies that are going through those cables or through those fibers. And although this seems like this particular module is a lot of memorization of specifications of speeds and of cable types, once you start using these day to day, it almost becomes second nature to keep in mind exactly the cable type you're using, the speeds that you can run over it, and the distances you can get depending on those speeds. We don't often see coaxial cable being used for Ethernet connections, but sometimes you do run into a legacy system that's been set up that's using some of these particular kinds of cable types. For instance, back in the day, there was a 10 base 5 networking type. That was what we used to call thick net. It was a really thick cable that you had to have literally something called a vampire tap that connected to. It was a cable type called RG8U. And because it was one of the initial Ethernet connection types, it ran at 10 megabits per second. But it could go quite a long distance. This was a heavily shielded cable, and you could get a 500 meter run out of a single piece of thick net. And it wasn't unusual to string that thick net all the way through a building and simply connect on devices as, as that particular cable winded its way all around the building. Well, it was very difficult to work with thick net. So there was another type of coaxial cable that we used called 10 base 2. We called that thin net. And as the name implies, it was a thinner cable. It was an RG58A slash U. Again, it ran at 10 megabit per second. There was no difference in speed there. But it did have a smaller distance. And, you know, we called this 10 base 5 and 10 base 2 because as a standard, we wanted to say they went 500 meters and about 200 meters. Just keep in mind that 10 base 2, that 2 doesn't necessarily stand for 200. They took the 185 meters and they rounded up to 200. But the practical use of this type of cabling and the distances for the standard was one that would allow you to go 185 meters. These days, we work with twisted pair cabling. And with twisted pair cabling, we have something called a category type, which is a standard type of cabling that we would use for these copper twisted pair networks. The first category that we used to work with was a category 1, and that was designed only for voice. There's no data that runs over a category 1 cable. We first started running data over category 3 cables. This is where we first were plugging in 10 megabit Ethernet connections. And that was 10 base T was the name of that standard. Standard, and we could go 100 meters, which was about 328 feet, over that single run of 10 base T or category 3 cabling. There was also a category 5 that we used. The category 5 was when we went to 100 megabit Ethernet. And that was called 100 base TX. And again, the distance is 100 meters. It's becoming very simple to see that a lot of the standards were using that 100 meter mark as something they were striving towards each step of the way. And again, in category 5E, when we wanted gigabit connectivity over our copper cabling, which was 1,000 base T, again, 100 meters was the distance that was set for the standard when running that speed of that particular Ethernet type over Category 5E. With Category 6, we needed something that would allow us the ability to go up to 10 gigabit Ethernet. And that would allow us 10G base T. But we'll notice we could also run 1,000 base T over this. We use that Category 6 for both usually. But for 10 gigabits per second, notice that we could only go 55 meters. So a little bit less than what we would normally use. If we were still using the Category 6 for gigabit connectivity, we could still go 100 meters. We just had a decreased amount of length if we were running 10 gig Ethernet over that copper twisted pair cabling. And that's where the category 6A, the 6A being the augmented category 6, that allowed us to run that same 10G base T standard at 10 gigabit per second. But now we went all the way up to being able to run 100 meters of 10 gigabit Ethernet over that twisted pair cabling. The standards for fiber types are very different depending on the type of signal you're sending over it. If we look at multi-mode fiber, we can run 100 base FX, which is the standard for 100 megabit over fiber with Ethernet. We can go a distance of 2 kilometers with multi-mode fiber. If we were running 
1,000 megabit or one gig connection over 1,000 base SX standard, we can go about 200 to 550 meters over that connection, 550 being the length over the latest type of multi-mode fiber that we can use. And if we're now doing the maximum 10 gigabits per second over fiber with the 10G base SR standard, we can go about 300 meters. Now, if we're working with single mode fiber, we can usually go much farther distances with single mode fiber than we can multi mode. And so for gigabit networks, which is the 1000 base LX standard, notice the LX versus the SX, LX being for the single mode connectivity, we can go a distance of two kilometers. So we're increasing that by almost a factor of four. And if we were doing 10 gigabit connectivity over 10G base LR, which is of course different than the 10G base SR, instead of 300 meters, we can go a distance of 10 kilometers when we're using this over a single mode fiber.